Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could teach the gullible to never be so comfortable with eyes they eat like comfort food? To disregard the bogus claims of pseudoscientific claims? Can you imagine just how much indeed the world would change? No more political predators playing on the populace with ilkus and plots and shift and kill metropolis. No more villains with the title in the Bible, Bible. holding phony tip providers like the stuff they teach is vital. Imagine it was normal to have to prove a claim you made. If folks really feel ashamed expressing content that was fake, it's not to say we never make mistakes, it's just to say we go out of our way to show the evidence it takes. Remain skeptical while you travel the world or even stay trapped. We're allowed to get fast. That's what it is, yo. Yeah. Keep reality intact. Yeah. Help the truth. I don't question every claim, especially the ones you believe in. Remain skeptical while you travel the world or reason. Afternoon. I'm Paul Sheehan. Today we have. Allison Van Levy and Tiffany Harding on Road to Reasons, A Skeptic's Guide to the 21st Century. Today is going to be our Scientology episode celebrating the Going Clear movie that's coming out tonight. On HBO. HBO. 8 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> I think it's Daylight Yay! Savings Time. Yay! <laughs> this is Davey. He's going to be hanging out with us. If you know the, the joke, uh, you know why we call him Davey. Um, we want to invite you, as always, to visit us on Facebook, give us a like, share. Uh, this is a show that deals with skepticism, atheism, religious thinking, tackling the issues of the day. Um, we also want to invite you to visit our YouTube page where we have our archived shows. And today we're going to have on Mark Ebner, who is an investigative journalist, and we're going to have on Chris Shelton, ex-Scientology Sea Org member. Both of these individuals have dealt with this matter extensively, and they're going to tell us what they think about the film, the current state of Scientology, where, it's, where it is, where it's headed, and I'm very excited to have them, but we also have to do some housekeeping as normal. We have our normal announcements and whatnot, and here on Road to Reason, we always do a religious joke of the week, and so Allison, what is our religious joke of the week? Well, I think it's only fitting that it be a Scientology joke. Okay. Um, how many Scientologists does it take to change a light bulb? I don't know. How many Scientologists does it take to change a light bulb? Okay. Any guess? Um, no. None. The light bulb just needs to donate $1 million to the Church of Scientology where it can become clear and then it will have the self-determination to change itself. <laughs> <laughs> You're too bad. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna make me snort. <laughs> That's too oh funny. god. That's a good one. Oh, uh, before we get into the news, I also want to tell people that uh, again, we are excited to be partners with Atheist TV. Uh, if you want to watch our re-air shows on Atheist TV on Roku, you can find us there as well. Uh, we are skipping our normal um, our normal segment on news where that's produced by Atheism TV, which is a YouTube channel. Uh, we apologize to those kind folks uh, for, we know how hard they work in prepping the news for us. We just didn't have time to get to it today and we are very sorry, but we also encourage you to check out The Infidel on Atheism TV. And so we have some news, right Tiffany? Well, you wouldn't consider it news when someone who is crazy acts crazy. You don't get mad at the dog when he bites you. But <laughs> one legislator, that means this is a person who holds political power, um, her name is Sylvia Allen. She's a state representative from the great state of Arizona. She has been in the news before when, they were, when there was an issue of uranium mining. She said, it's okay because the Earth's only 6,000 years old. Well, this time she came out with something because the U.S. is going through, as she called, a moral erosion. The only cure is for mandatory church service every Sunday for every citizen. Mandatory. You have to go to church every Sunday and that's the way to clean out the moral erosion of our culture and our country. But she does codify it by saying that at least you can go to the church of your choosing. Church of Scientology? <laughs> Any church. Can I make a guess? Flying Spaghetti Monster Church. Is this woman Republican? <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> you know what? I'm, yeah. Do we even need to ask this yes, question anymore? Yes, she is. Shocking. Hey, yes, no, she is. no. Don't get me started. The show is nonpartisan. I know Democrats are just as kooky. <laughs> yeah. Flat earthers? 
I've run into a few. In really? fact, there's a very famous, I'm not going to name him on here, I, I actually, um, he's, he's on Facebook, but uh, he is an anti-Scientologist, and I love some of the, the dirt he's found on them, but he's convinced black people had it better under slavery. So, oh, and he's a oh, de Democrat. Oh. I'm not naming him, don't go there. <laughs> so, so uh, you can find nuts across the political That's spectrum. True. That, the, is true. You know, that is true. Insanity plagues every political organization. Oh, like, now, I will say that Arizona is the state that had criminon in its prison systems for right. a while, which is a Scientology front group. Um, and if, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Sylvia Allen, didn't she also make comments about good Christian white people or something yeah. like that? Yeah, she said that um, <laughs> just the way... You can't make this stuff up. No, she was talking about, you know, how immigrants, it, we need a moral rebirth, and she especially wants to put it on immigrants, women, and the good white dominionists are the ones who are going to lead. I mean, she doesn't say it outright. They're not stupid, but she did allude to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. Dominionism. You know what dominionism is, right? Yeah. So that's her shtick, and so that's what she's going for. And I don't see how it's... I mean, I don't want to be accused of exaggerating, but I don't see how it's any different than what like ISIS is doing. And and anybody who knows me knows I'm a total supporter of the Second Amendment. Um, and but she is like one of the worst possible representatives for that movement, and she makes yeah. some really insane remark with guns too. Yeah, the, they should be taken everywhere: government facilities, schools. Well, I got no problem with that, but that's but, a different story. But schools, <laughs> hospital, whatever. You know, I mean, there's, there's. She makes it seem like you get to have a gun because God says so. That was the that's issue. The so thing. Like it, that's like the it, thing. Yeah, it's mandated is by that God. In the Bible? They have guns in the back. Yeah, it's right after turn. <laughs> yeah, that's so it's weird. right after turn the other cheek. Right. <laughs> Can we talk about another nut job Republican. And then lock a Glock on it. That's what. Sure. Um, I don't know. Everybody probably heard about this guy, Mike Pence, out of Indiana, the governor. Mm -hmm. um, he actually signed into law this bigoted legislation um, under the guise of religious freedom. Which, mm -hmm. if you stick that on your legislation, then nobody gets to criticize it because otherwise you're a bigot. Uh -huh. So you're not allowed to say anything if it's called religious anything. So he was going to allow businesses to discriminate against LGBT. What I love about this story, though, is that the backlash was swift and severe, and not in the usual like Hollywood celebrity you know, the way where you're calling them out. That's not effective. It's big business that's effective. You've got CEOs from corporations like Salesforce. You've got Yelp, major organizations boycotting the whole state. Even some progressive Christian groups who have their um, annual conventions there threatening to withhold their conventions. This is a huge financial impact on Indiana, which should have results. Just calling them out on being amoral won't do anything. They don't care whom they're offending. But if you hit them in the wallet, that's where it hurts. So I think it's fantastic that these corporations are so quick to, b to bring out the backlash. I have a question about that. I mean, were they not expecting... I mean, I know exactly what they were thinking when they did that law, but then you got to apply. You know that their religion is not the only religion out there. It's the only one that matters, Tiffany. It's the only one that matters, but yes. how can somebody this can say... This is America. Say, yeah, it's America, and we all have religious freedom, then mean it. No, somebody can no. say, I don't want women into my business unless they have a veil on. And they're absolutely... You know why? That squirrel. <laughs> you know why? Because Hobby Lobby. Yeah. Hobby Lobby, second to Citizens United, is the worst Supreme Court decision ever. Yeah. Because now um, corporations get to have religious feelings. And if your feelings well, are hurt by serving gay people, then you shouldn't have to do it. This is interesting. Or black people or Jews or anybody. It's interesting because, the, he, you know, I'm wondering when this, this senator is going to claim that he's a victim of religious bigotry from the backlash. Right. You know, this is yeah. also a Scientology tactic. We just saw with the Garcia case, and for those that aren't familiar with it, the Garcias were basically conned into giving exorbitant amounts of money to the Church of Scientology to pay for cross and in clear basically water. in clear water. Yeah. And they basically were told that they were the ones that were going to make the difference by giving this money. Vastly more money was collected than was needed. They sued Scientology. Scientology had this arbitration process that didn't really exist. It was only on paper, it had never been used in sixty years. Never mind the fact that the Garcias were not allowed to enter onto a Scientology property because they had been excommunicated. Um, but Scientology said you have to use our arbitration process that doesn't exist, and a judge agreed with them. 
And he said you couldn't get on the property to use our arbitration system in the first place. Right. The judge doesn't care. It's a religious matter. It's not the place for the courts to decide. We have a real problem in this country, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. We really, truly do. Yeah. Um, there was not a time. There was a time where these things didn't happen in our courts. It didn't happen in our legislation. This idea that this is somehow a return, like having churches violate people and having the churches having total immunity across and the board. Having it under, the guys. It. Yeah, under guys. Yeah, under guys. This didn't the always umbrella. exist. This just no. did not always exist. And we really need to start doing a better job in this country about challenging our politicians, uh, start going after groups like the ACLU to start writing briefs and things and defending people's rights against religious abuse. It, it just it needs to start happening. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get into the subject here in just a minute on Scientology and the things you're going to hear. you got to keep something in mind. Other religions are going to start picking up on this. Now, can you imagine the Catholic Church basically saying to all the child abuse of victims that you have no legal recourse to sue us because this is a religious matter that has to be decided with inside the confines of the church? And, and the courts are going to have to side with them because they've already made this decision for Scientology. Mm -hmm. You can't just parry chick when one religion gets it one way, another religion yeah. gets it another way. This is the danger that we are facing in this country with our courts right now. And we're going to get into the discussion of how Scientology is faring in the court of public opinion versus the courts of, 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 our, of our nation. But in order to do that, we're going to have to take our normal PSA break. And when we come back from our PSA break, uh, we are going to be joined by Mark Ebner and Chris Shelton, and we're going to let uh, Carrie take us away to our PSA. Good. Homemade noodles. Oh. Marty, stop it. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. It reminds me, I've been thinking uh, maybe we should try a new form of birth control. I heard about this one, it's called the IUD, intrauterine device. Or we could try the patch on your arm. Actually, I think that one goes on your butt. Bedsider.org has birth control information and a lot more. And it's... What do you think? Though? Arm of the butt. There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably put the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. This is Richard Dawkins. Doing commercials is unfamiliar territory for me, but I'm inviting you to watch Road to Reason, a skeptic's guide to the 21st century, on Fairfax Public Access every Sunday. Each week the hosts tackle wishful thinking, religion, pseudoscience and the harm they cause with a combination of facts, humour and community involvement. They challenge believers to defend their faith and give you, the skeptic, a voice. With live call-ins for viewers and streaming on the World Wide Web, there's never a dull moment. Don't wait. Look at them now on Facebook and YouTube. And remember to watch Road to Reason, a skeptic's guide to the 21st century. Or there'll be hell to pay. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. Face drooping. Arm weakness. Speech difficulty. Time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately. Learn the body language and spot a stroke fast. Hi. May I please have an application? Thank you. Skip the drama. Get your diploma. Okay. Take that first step towards a better future. Find free adult education classes at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Road to Reason. We are now going to be joined by Mark Ebner and Chris Shelton. Um, Mark Ebner, as I stated earlier, was a, is an investigative reporter. He's been taking on Scientology for well over a decade. Uh, he's also the guy that blew the whistle on Bill Cosby before that was popular to do and ruined Tiffany's childhood. Ruined my childhood. She, she explained to me. Ruined it. Um, 
And he's also been finding a lot of dirt on them recently. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit of that. He's had some major finds on them. Um, and he's going to be kind of our voice today talking about the history of Scientology and its uh, litigious nature against journalists and people speaking out. Chris Shelton is a former Sea Org member uh, in Scientology. He has some of the most popular videos on uh, YouTube today regarding Scientology. A very well-spoken individual on what is wrong with Scientology, how it operates, uh, and he also was very unique in the organization that he got to travel all over the country to the different orgs, which is what their churches are called, um, and he got to really see just how bad things are across the nation. I'd like to invite both of them on now. Uh, Mark and Chris, welcome. Hi. Uh, hello, thank you. Welcome to Road to Reason, the Skeptic's Guide of the 21st Century. I'd like to take a moment and I'd like to uh, just kind of open this up and uh, talk a little bit to Mark first. Um, you, sir, were the one who um, helped South Park uh, do research that everybody kind of knows about Scientology through South Park and you yeah. really nailed it. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the day that I got the call from uh, a South Park producer to uh, come down to South Park Studios and consult on their uh, Scientology related uh, episode. And, um, it, you know, essentially I was just like, I, I, I've always known that Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park, are absolute geniuses. Mm -hmm. um, so I was humbled. I, you know, I got in my car, drove down there, and uh, I got to see how. You know what the special sauce is, how they make that show and how they make it so current and effective. Um, you know, basically, they just sat me down uh, in a panel discussion with their writers and they taped me telling, uh, basically rehashing the story about how I joined Scientology undercover for Spy Magazine back in 1996. And they used that essentially as their story template and wrapped it around this little device where they would have Tom Cruise, as depicted in the cartoon, trapped in a closet. <laughs> now, uh, believe me, that uh, comedy uh, South Park built Comedy Central. Nobody yeah. will deny it. Their first ten years was all about uh, South Park. Um, when they asked, so they pretty much had free reign, and they weren't censored by the network. But they did have to deal with standards and practices at Comedy Central when it came to uh, the question that they asked. Can we say Tom Cruise is gay on this show? And they said, absolutely not. And they said, well, can we put him in a closet and he can't get out? And they said, oh, yes, you absolutely can do that. And then, you know, uh, oh let's just, you know, to cut to the chase, uh, probably the most popular South Park episode of all time was aired. They sacrificed one of their key characters, oh, yeah. Chef as played by an active uh, celebrity Scientologist, uh, Isaac Hayes, who quit after the show aired because he took offense to them satirizing his religion. Interestingly enough, Chef, the late Isaac Hayes, had no problem disgracing Muslims, Christians, or anyone else uh -huh. they chose to take on in the history of the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also amazing how Scientology disposed of Chef. Uh, they, they, it was. I remember watching the news the next day, and somebody said, "You just don't." Yeah, exactly. You just don't lash out at Trey Parker and Matt Stone. No. You know that, there, that is a, You know, if you think Scientology is, you know, can destroy your image, just wait for. Uh, just wait for. Um, uh, South Park uh, to retaliate, and they did a great job. Uh, Chris. Yes. You uh, were in Scientology for a number of years, and at some point you woke up and got out. Um, can you talk a little bit about, real briefly, what woke you up and why are you motivated to speak out now? Uh, yeah, really briefly, um, the, the, the key thing that occurred to me one day was that I was involved in an organization and a practice that was telling more lies than it was truth. And that was a major, like, whoa for me when that hit me one day. And that set me on the road to uh, leaving the C organization and eventually Scientology 
as a as a practice. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Would you do the people actually consider themselves sincere? They're not lies to them, you know, or is it are they really just out and out lies? No, the people inside the genius of 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 the cult practice is that the members really are true believers at almost all levels. And it takes um, a, a lot of observation, a lot of willingness to question, and a lot of, um, well, you know, looking and, and, and uh, kind of peeking behind the curtain to see through those lies. Because it's easy to convince yourself that, you know, what you're doing is for the greater good and to sort of uh, ignore the things that maybe don't make sense. Right because of all the good you're doing. Well, today um, we got to get down to brass tacks. And <laughs> this is, this is uh, Scientology's day of reckoning um, for a lot of the horrible things that it's been doing. 160 lawyers yes. worth of Yes, I understand yeah. about 160 lawyers helped vet this process for HBO. <laughs> Um, HBO moved it from March 13th uh, to today to try to bump it up against Game of Thrones to get a, a wider viewing audience. <laughs> um, the uh, select theaters have all been sold out. Um, I'd like to take the audience back though sometime. And I'd like to take the audience back to a time before South Park and before it was popular uh, to expose Scientology um, you know, we're supposed to have a critical thinker of the week episode here, and yep. I know Tiffany, uh, you you wanted to talk a little bit about I our, who are who we want to attribute our critical thinker of the week to. I would say that our critical thinker of the week uh, is actually more critical thinkers of the week, and that's every former Scientologist, everybody who got out, everyone who had the the thetans, the thick meaty thetans to leave Scientology at the risk of disconnection, litigation, harassment, mm -hmm. and um, constantly and um, against the more fervent members of the religion. And I would like to salute you and your bravery because I don't think it's something that I could do. And I think as rough as they are, one of the bravest things to do is to walk away with your head up. Yeah. That's what I say. And one of the uh, brave people that we want to salute and we want to talk about that uh, harkens back to um, you know what Mark did with South Park is a guy by the name of Dennis Ehrlich. Uh, I think we all know about Xenu because Dennis Ehrlich was leaking this information on the internet. Yeah. Um, it's really where Xenu, the evil galactic overlord story came from. We have some footage <laughs> though. This individual paid a very high price. I think Mark was talking, uh, wrong clip. Uh, oh. Mark was talking about um, what Dennis Ehrlich uh, went through um, and, and people like him, which is that in this unfortunate case, Scientology got a court order and they raided his house. Yeah. They went in, acted like they were the police. Um, they literally had their lawyers go in with a court order. He had to call the police uh, to come to his house. You can see here, this is footage of stuff that was confiscated from his home. They took his computer. They were erasing stuff on his hard drives. Imagine a cult, a church, acting as if it is the state coming mm -hmm. into your home using the state to invade your home, to uh, go through your private property, to take your property, and to silence you because you're telling the truth. And I think this is absolutely stunning footage. Uh, Mark Bunker, who has Xenu TV, had a, a bit I took this from. I want to credit him on this. Um, but I want to kind of go back to um, Mark and ask Mark, Mark, have you, you know, it, could something like this happen today? I mean, are we, what's the political landscape like today? Well, I don't think, I, I, political landscape, I'm, I, I think you can speak to that better than I can, but I can tell you that they're not going to be staging raids like this, you know. Uh, it, ultimately, I think Dennis Ehrlich won that war. You know, interestingly enough, and, uh, uh, you know, er Ehrlich, in German, I believe, means honest. Honest, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, that's exactly what Dennis uh, was. But being that he was so green out of Scientology, I think that yeah, his 
you know, I met him at a, at a Scientology protest, and he was one angry guy. But he also was armed with the facts, much like your guest Chris is. He knew about the inner workings of Scientology, so no matter what they st took from him, they couldn't take what was up here. Right. Dennis Ehrlich's a smart guy, and he knows, you know, he knows where the bodies are buried. And uh, so he has always been affected, uh, effective in the fight against Scientology. Now, you just said where the bodies are buried. Do you think he could tell us where Shelley Miscavige is? <laughs> uh, I'm sure he'd have a better idea than most. Not only that, but uh, uh, Chris, he, he as, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Ehrlich was a chief cramming officer. What is at that? Scientology. And what would that yeah. entail, Chris, if you don't mind me throwing that over to Chris because he knows better than I do? Yeah, that in terms of Dennis's knowledge, yeah. as a cramming officer, he would have an extensive familiarity with the church's policies and the methodologies and the what they call the technology. Yeah. You know, he would be very, very familiar with a lot of that information as a as an ex Scientologist. Okay. Um, you know, and I want to talk about, like, it does appear to me that the political landscape has changed. Uh, Scientology has appeared to be largely defanged. Uh, media does not seem to be as afraid as they used to in uh, pushing back against Scientology. I know, Chris, uh, you had uh, and I talked last night uh, yeah. about that. I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit on that. Yeah, absolutely. The, the whole... The series of events that have happened through, you know, everything with, uh, you know, the, the stuff that happened with Dennis Ehrlich and the stuff in the 90s, all the way through um, the, the critics that have, you know, gradually been coming out and coming more uh, into the public notice to what really, uh, really changed things was when Anonymous hit the scene because they made an international, uh, you know, dog and pony show out of Scientology. And Scientology could not fight back effectively against that because they were completely unprepared for um, exposure of that nature that quickly. Do you think and, it is? I'm sorry. And, and, and when that took off, that opened the door to so many more ex-Scientologists coming out and speaking. And, now, and the media started taking more and more notice. And now, what I see with this documentary happening right now in just the last two months is literally a 180 degree shift where the Scientology's lies are no longer being forwarded by the media about how they have millions of members and goofy yeah. things like that. Now the truth is really out there and it's, and it's kind of going viral. Okay. You know, they believe their own hype or no, that's eroding away. I'm, I'm sorry? Do they believe their own hype or is that slowly eroding away and that's why they're not as powerful as they were? The church, you mean? Yeah. Well, in, I mean, in, in the inner workings of the church at the highest levels, they know the truth. It's right. not like they don't know that Scientology is a very small, you know, religion, that, that, that uh, cult that doesn't really have that many members, doesn't have millions of people. They know that. But the press isn't buying it anymore. Right. But the press wasn't, right. the press was forwarding Scientology's PR. Lines. Mark, you have something you want to add? Well, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, historically, listen, if we go back, uh, and I want to give all credit to uh, authors like John Atack, A Piece of Blue Sky, brilliant yep. book. Uh, ben Coryden, I hope I pronounced his name right, Hubbard, Madman or Messiah. Paulette Cooper, The Scandal of Scientology. These writers all came before me, and, and in uh, the press, Rich Behar with Time Magazine, yep. the Cult of Greed cover story, which was a tremendous expose on Scientology in 1991. Um, you got to understand, that kind of reporting came at a price. For Rich Behar personally, who was stalked, harassed, and, uh, uh, you know, defamed by Scientology, uh, not unlike myself, uh, and, uh, you know, Time Magazine itself, who spent over half a billion dollars uh, fighting a battle which they ultimately won with the First Amendment on their side uh, over that cover story. Um, Scientology is 
not so much a snake in the nail in the mailbox cult as much as they are a, 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 a you know just they'll litigate you to death that's what they'll do now being a free agent you know i mean yes i was writing for spy when i did my expose do you want to buy a bridge and they came at us you know they put us on notice Spy magazine had to spend thousands of dollars and the fact was i had the first amendment on my side because right. For that expose, I recounted my own experience. And you can't dispute that. But the problem was, for many years, they only had one playbook, and that was Hubbard's playbook. Attack, never defend. Yeah. For me, it was like, well, every time you attack me, I'm going to write five more stories. And they realized over the years, and now we're running into decades, where I don't give up, they understand that I won't give up. And every time they come at me, I will come back at them five times harder. And so far, it's worked. It seems like the internet's the great equalizer. Yeah. With like anonymous and with things going viral so quickly, they can't lie about this stuff anymore because the truth is right there in front of them. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. and actually, if I could say one thing about that, uh, and I've made this point before, Hubbard had no idea that the internet was coming. He died in 1986 before it was even a, really a thing. Right. And none of the church's operating policies for dealing with critics or dealing with, uh, you know, enemy attacks, as they call it, can, can have any idea of, of the internet. So they, 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 it was never part of their playbook to deal with an enemy who has that on their side. Right. And so they, their, their tactics and their policies are all about bullying, harassing, stalking, intimidating, and that's a very personal thing. Yeah. And with the internet, you make that the, world's, the world sees what's going on overnight. Yep. Mark, so, um, mm -hmm. you had taken on Scientology and you had them come after you and you, you've been monitoring how they dealt with other journalists over the years. Is there been recently a shift in the way Scientology is responding to negative stories that you've seen? Yeah, I, I, I think there has been a shift and I don't think it's a, a very credible one. I think what they're doing now is, if you look on the uh, high ticket, highly rated uh, television event shows, Super Bowl, that sort of thing, you're going to see Scientology ads. Uh, and people, you know, will be like, hey, Ebner, what the F? You know, uh, <laughs> I, I saw Scientology on the Super Bowl or the Academy Awards or whatever. Right. But you see this is just primping and posturing that's all that is that what they're doing is they put that up on uh, national television some silly Dianetics a advertisement commercial and what they're trying to do is tell their few remaining adherents see we're on national television oh. we're all over the world we're doing fine but let's be real it is all smoke and mirrors yeah there are very few bodies left in scientology and you know basically as i said you know tony ortega over uh you know at his underground bunker he asked for a few words and i said yeah you know i mean after this going clear ends to uh airs today on hbo you know you're just gonna see you know desperate adherents clinging to the life raft of scientology you know uh you know that is basically ballasted by immense real estate holdings now yeah. the one thing to watch for and it's going to be a comedy of errors is Scientology <laughs> bought the KCET, KCET building our last bastion of public television in Los Angeles <coughs> yep. so it's it, it says to me that Scientology is going to attempt to go digital what they have in mind I have no idea but since they have very few adherents I guess they're going to try and uh, I guess they're going to try and posture on the internet, and that is going. They've already failed in all their attempts at propaganda and that sort of thing. So it's going to be really interesting and comedic to see what they have in store in the digital realm, because frankly, that and a bunch of buildings is all they have left. Oh. So we we wow. basically have a. Um, a religion, so-called religion, that seems to be, I mean, they're still sending out threatening letters, but the journalists seem, uh, the shift has moved away from going after the journalist as hard as they used to and more of trying to hold on to the members they have. Right. Um, and Chris, you had some uh, thoughts on this as well. 
where you were talking to me about how the ads were not aimed at us. They are purely there, and I think Mark alluded to this, for the sole purpose of holding on to the few remaining people they have. Exactly. They're, they rely for their survival on a very few, <coughs> very well money, very wealthy people. And if they can keep those people convinced that the show is on the road, that everything is under control, and that they are promoting and they are getting new members, then those, they call them whales mm -hmm. in Scientology even, right? We, that's what we call them too. Uh, if those whales can stay with the program and they do a lot of work behind the scenes to keep those people happy, uh, then everything's good. Right, and that also extends down to the common, you know, regular Joe Scientologists too, because they bilk everybody in Scientology for right. as much money as they can. They are, they are the most ruthless people when it comes to getting money out of people. Funny that you should members. mention that, Chris. Oh, the, oh my God, uh, we were talking about this earlier. Funny you should mention that. Yes, we actually have a clip we're going to show in a moment. I give my, <laughs> my uh, technical director to to get it queued up. <laughs> um, it's. One of the really interesting things that I don't think that this film really heavily goes into on abuses um, on, but it is an abuse that is very prevalent right now in Scientology, and it's the abuse of wedging money out of people who just don't have it. Yeah. That's and right. this they is think they don't have it. They think they, they don't, think have, they don't it. have it. <laughs> this is undercover footage that was shot inside of a Sea Org meeting on a Scientology base. Um, we have some lower thirds with it. We're going to show it. We're going to come back and we're going to just ask you some questions about it. And uh, Carrie, if we could go to that clip, please. Uh, everybody has money or access to it. I wish you could see. I know that they're crying to you. Every new mm -hmm. red falls for that. I remember when I was at, as a new red, I was dredging someone for power, and the lady said, You know, I don't have it. I said, Well, I'm doing it. They just cried for it, and I gave my hard earned money to them. Oh. Right. Because I, you know, I didn't know that people say they don't have money when they do. I didn't know that. <laughs> right? Uh, but we're going to have to show you and prove it to you because I know you don't believe it. So here's what we're going to do the suits, just bring your person. I don't care if. Rich, poor, we don't care. You got to sit there, though. You got to sit there while we go online and look up all their credit cards so we can show them to you. So you can see that your people definitely have money. They just don't consider they do. But when, they, when we get done, they're like surprised. Sometimes they don't have it. Like we have a uh, doc. You have a uh, what's his name? And he went through all the press. He just go on And he really didn't have it. But he's on TA and he doesn't care. Uh, he had 3,700. Excuse me. I don't want to say he didn't have any, which I consider that not much money. Now maybe you consider it a lot. All right. So. Um, that's just incredible. Poor, rich, we don't care. You got to get a hold of their credit cards, and we're going to show you that they got money. People lie to you and tell you they don't have money. Thirty-seven hundred dollars is not a lot of money. You might think it is. Um, Mark, did you ever think that you'd see something like that smuggled out of a Scientology compound? Uh, well, I, nothing surprises me now. I mean, there, I mean, the, the 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 cult is leaking. That's for sure. But I can speak to that uh, that that kind of redging, if you will, from personal experience. Uh, once again, when I was researching, do you want to buy a bridge for Spy Magazine? I uh, uh, I made my way from the Big Blue, and my end run was at the Celebrity Center, and they were trying to get me to go on the purification rundown for several thousand of dollars and for your viewers really simply that's where they they take care of your body you know you, the idea was clear mind clear body and we'll take care of your spirit and all that well they were going to throw me in a sauna 
fill me through with this elixir, olive oil, and, and other potions, and make me believe that uh, I was being purified of all my, uh, you know, past uh, poisons and toxins that I had introduced into my system. Well, or anyway, make you a delicious dinner. Olive oil. Yeah, well, my Spy ma Magazine budget was had been <laughs> worn thin already, and now they wanted $5,000 from me. So, uh, but I wanted to see what they do, so I just sat there and they said, well, do you have credit cards? And I'm in this big, nice office, and I show them, I pulled out all my credit cards, and then they got on the phone with another guy who I imagined was in a boiler room down below the celebrity <laughs> center, who was giving me cues on how to get the credit card companies to put more money on my line of credit. And within, literally within a half an hour, I had a $10,000 advance ready on an American Express card. There's and they were like, see, you got the money. We can do this. And I was like, uh, you know, let me think about it. And I walked out of there and I said, that's the end of the line. And I started writing my story. And, but you, and I'm going to ask Chris to come in on this in just a second, but oh you God. talked about leaking. You yourself have been finding things that we never thought we would see uh, coming out of Scientology. You have found uh, awards that were given that cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to get that people are just dumping on the street. You found documents that Narconon International has abandoned its offices. Could you say within about a minute, kind of explain all that? Yep. You oh. see what I'm holding up right here? I'll move it over a little more to center. It's a patron award. Oh, yep. Yeah, this is, well, anyway, it's it's on the internet. Mm. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, what is Gay Rabisi. Gay Rabisi is the matriarch of the Rabisi acting clan, right. of who you'll know, uh, Giovanni Rabisi, Marissa Rabisi, who was married to the artist, uh, the quote unquote artist, Beck. <laughs> um, anyway, she's a big donor, so right. they give her these little plaques um, for all the millions of dollars she's donated to help further Scientology. Well, gay, a lot of good that did, huh? Anyway, uh, I find these stuff literally in the trash. And it's a fair comeuppance because, as I think you know, Scientology has had PIs on my back for years. You know, and uh, it, you know, and I, I used to see them outside of my house. And when I'd spot them, I'd go wave to them. But you know, they were literally going through my trash. And fortunately, um, uh, not Mike Rinder, Marty Rathburn uh, leaked me the actual PI reports, and you can find them if you Google my name and go on Gawker.com. Right. We actually put those reports right up there, so we see. Uh, so you can see the dunderheaded way they go about trying to silence critics. It's just not working anymore. No. Why, I wanted to ask, why, why are people throwing those in the trash? Well, that's a good question. You know, I, I, I mean, literally, as you know, I also, uh, uh, found, you know, listen, I have a network of people out there that anytime something uh, Scientology related, you, you know, gets floated around Hollywood or the greater L.A. area, I get the call. I also got a whole uh, uh, treasure chest of Narconon, another front group for Scientology. I got their documents, which I in turn shipped off to Tony Ortega, and he made a out of that. I don't know how the stuff how or why the stuff is winding up in the trash. I think Scientology needs to spend some of their uh, remaining money on a good shredding machine. <laughs> um, you know, I actually we're we're actually coming up here fairly on about I don't know, we got about like twelve minutes left in the show, maybe a little more. Allison, you had, you you know, you wanted to talk about moving towards the film. So do you want to talk about Yeah, that? you know, we've had kind of an internal debate here. We're debating do you how many Scientologists do you think will actually see this film? Like is Tom Cruise gonna actually see this film? Not with an open mind, of course, but at all. Do these people hear criticism at all? Because it's my impression that he's probably on a compound surrounded by all Scientologists. His family is Scientologists. The groundskeepers, everybody's a Scientologist. David Miscavige is not going to tell him what's going on on HBO, except, you know, he won't listen to it. He might know that it's going on, but I'm wondering how many Scientologists you guys think will actually see this documentary and be influenced by it. 
Are they if, even? If I can start, and I'll throw it to Chris, real simple. I, I don't. The high level, the powerful, the very well moneyed Scientologists. I don't believe they're going to see this for the simple reason that Scientology has drilled into them that we, the media, are merchants of chaos. We are horrible, evil people. You, you see, I mean, we are the Antichrist. You're suppressive. So they are, yeah, mm -hmm. we're suppressive people. So in other words, it's going to be of great detriment to them if they lay eyes on this documentary. However, the younger Scientologists, the newly formed, uh, the newly signed up in the Sea Org, Internet Savvy, I think a bunch of them are going to ultimately see this and it's going to help change their minds. That's right. And yeah. Uh, exactly, and I also think that um, I think that, and I was and I was talking about this, uh, you know, with with Paul. I think that the biggest influence that this documentary is going to have on Scientologists inside what what I call the bubble world, inside their little world, is that those bubbles are going to pop because while the, all the Scientologists may or may not watch this thing, their friends and family are going to. And those friends and family are going to have something to say about it because this documentary is powerful. It is not something you just walk away from. And it's also not something that you write off just because their Scientologist friend or family member says, oh, those are just a bunch of liars and they're just a bunch of bad people. And let me show you these documentaries from the church on how bad they are. If they try that, if the Scientologists try to do that with their friends and family, they are in for a major surprise because this can, documentary blows all that away. And if I can just punctuate what Chris just said about friends and family, if you want to see how the power of friends and family who are hip to the evil criminal mind control cult that is Scientology, you want to see how powerful they are, just look at Tom Cruise's marriage to Katie Holmes. Without friends or family, she'd still be married to that guy and she would be, you know, an adherent of the cult. She's out because of friends and family, and I'm absolutely sure of and that. And their kid would be in Sea Org right now. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, yeah five-year-old signing a billion-year contract. What is, the, what is this film? I wanted to ask you oh, about that. No. Well, what, yeah. what does this film expose? What, is, what does this film do that hasn't been done? What is it saying that has Scientology? And as you're explaining this, I'm going to have my um, technical director put up some websites mm -hmm. that Scientology is paying for advertisements to <laughs> to capture. If you type in Scientology, Alex Gibney, Mike Rinder, Marty Rathbun, Tony Ortega, Scientology is trying to intercept public opinion by getting the top ranking. She's going to show that while you're talking about it. But what is it that this film shows? that has them so terrified that they're paying for advertisements. Right. Uh, what's in it? <laughs> what you have in this film are the stories, the very personal and detailed stories of eight ex-Scientologists from all levels of Scientology and from all time periods, from the 70s to the present. So it is undeniable that you see in this film a long-term pattern of abuse harassment and criminal activity and there's really no other word for it but criminal activity on the part of this organization and the way that it goes about destroying people's lives in all different aspects that every part of it is touched on in this film through these eight stories right. and you also see and this is quite brilliant on the part of Alex Gibney and Lawrence Wright is you see how this cult activity can actually hit anyone. It is not a bunch of stupid people yeah. who didn't know what they were doing that got involved in this. Every one of these people are very smart people. Yeah. Yeah. But they show you how the convincing process and the initiation process works, how they get you into it, and how you get slowly sucked into what is truly a prison of belief. So, so and, and it shows the consequences of being sucked into that prison and then getting yourself out of it and the shunning, the disconnection that goes on and the tragic consequences of it. Could this film be used as an educational tool, yeah. for like say if your kid gets involved in Scientology at the very early stages of saying, you know, son, daughter, watch this, be on the lookout for this and maybe it would help 
deprogram them before it gets too far down the road? Absolutely. It, that would very much be yeah. uh, a very useful idea for this documentary because it's it's very hard hitting, and I can tell you as you know a veteran Scientologist that. Uh, my respect for Alex Gibney as a filmmaker went through the roof when I saw this because there's no exaggeration, there's no playing on your emotions uh, despite the facts. The facts are the facts, and he is very, very accurate in this film. And, and what if our I, director, if, if, mm -hmm. if I can take thirty seconds just to say to, to address their internet, uh, they're fighting back on the internet with all that propaganda. See, that's a joke. I every time I see them trying to do that, I retweet it as a foot bullet for them because it it turns on themselves. They're attacking an Academy Award winning uh, a, a documentarian and a Pulitzer Prize winning author, Lawrence Wright. Uh, you know, with the book go going clear, it's an absolute absolute joke that they, they you know they can they think they can take on and diminish these great minds who are producing this great work you know this is they they can't win they can't win it on any playing field and it's a beautiful thing exactly I agree completely and in fact I honestly believe that Scientology cannot come back from this yeah well, well we're, I was going to ask you, I'm sorry. So we were just watching some footage there as you guys were talking of their propaganda film uh, pushing back against Alex Gibney. And anybody who watches that will note two things. One, it's a personal ad hominem attack on Alex Gibney. Perfect. And number two, they're showing just how beautiful and wonderful Scientology is. These glowing, you know, they, they've added effects to the footage to make it appear more beautiful. And we three uh, noticed something, and I will let one of these two bring up what we noticed and ask you all what you think about it. You go first. You that go there's first. no people? There's no, there's no body there. And it's, there's I find it fascinating because I kind of, it insults my intelligence. I'm like, do you think I'm this stupid that there's all these accusations against the Church of Scientology oh, <laughs> and all they do is go ad hominem attack against the accusers and say, we're not a cult. Look at the beautiful tennis courts. Right. Look at our facilities. Look how beautiful. <laughs> it's like a resort or something. It's like as though. Yeah, Sandals but Resort. It, but it's devoid of, of human beings. But there's no beings. people. It, it reminded me of pictures, I mean, you see pictures of Pyongyang, right? This is the best, this is the representative of our country. The streets are clean, everything is great. Then you go out and it's just a, it's just a backwoods nothing, but that's the one jewel they want to show everybody. That's, Chris? That's a showcase. <laughs> yeah. Is they are prisoners of belief. Oh, there it is. There it right. is. This isn't. Yeah. My I, question, I, I, though, about I mean, those honestly, images. You know, the secrets yeah. were out long ago. I think the most effective tool in the last few decades were, were the release of "Thank You, Dennis" and everybody else, Arnie Lerma, blah blah blah. You know, was the release of the upper level cosmology of Scientology. And once the story of Zenu got out, um, <laughs> hey, you know, Zenu, yeah, that w that was huge. Now we're relying on, you know, facts and, and people on camera who otherwise would have been afraid to do right. this speaking from their own experience and I couldn't be happier. I just, exactly. I just want to ask with the people being devoid in those images, Chris, um, are those people, is that either David Miscavige's vision of the future is a peopleless world <laughs> or are those people all in the hole at, uh, at gold? Yeah. Well, it's actually both. And, and, I'll, and I'll just be straight up on this. David Miscavige is not a good man. No. And he no. doesn't like people. So, you know, the idea that there's going to be a lot of, you know, these videos really put truth, you know, really show the lie that there's millions of members because it would be easy to fill these things with lots of people if there were millions of members. As it is, that base that they're showing you has been whittled down to a couple hundred people, and they are very miserable people. And they and the people who leave are are now these are people who've been in Scientology for thirty years. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been in good standing for thirty years, and overnight they become religious bigots who have a hate-filled agenda, who are are disgusting yep. apostates, who are liars, sexual deviants. Um, you know, this, this all happens with a, you know literally overnight. Right. That's right. And 
my, my question is, how's, where's the Scientology tech failing? It, it, because according to Scientology, they're the only ones that have the answers, but they can't, didn't have the answers for these people. They have their lie detector, which is called the E-meter, and they haven't caught these people for 30 years. So Yeah, you're, you're asking very dangerous questions there. <laughs> yeah. Ethics no. committee hey, for you. Ethics yeah, committee. Uh, I wanted, and I would say, oh. do not ever underestimate the power of mind control. Yeah. You know, I mean, if it, 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 as much as I like to, you know, mock, spoof, and make fun of Scientologists in general. If any Scientologists wanted to get out and they wanted to reach out to me, I would be happy to hand them a copy of Steve Hassan's book, uh, Co Combating Cult Mind Control. I would be happy to show them the upper levels, and I would be very patient, and I would be very happy that they were making an effort to get out of Scientology. I'm not this bad guy. I mean, you know, yes, it is open season on Scientology, and I'm all for, you know, making fun of the cult and and you know the adherence right. but when they want to make a break it's serious business and it's not easy you know being in a cult Chris can tell you when you come out it you, you you're not armed equipped with the tools to deal with life on life's terms because right. you were living in an ulterior reality <coughs> am I correct Chris? Gesundheit. Very yeah. much so it is a serious adjustment it took me months just to realize how I had been unable to experience, you know, a, a full range of emotions because there was so much suppression of emotion and feeling and, and real life within that cult world. Everything always has to be bright and happy and cheerful. Right. And that's after a couple decades of that, you get a little twisted. In like we, we, well, have, we have three minutes left. I'm going to let Allison ask her question, and then i got to wrap up. Well, I, had heard, I was curious. I had heard that, um, I don't want to talk about Charles Manson. I had heard about Charles Manson studying Scientology because he was interested in the brainwashing technique. And the Nation of Islam. Yeah. The Nation of Islam. Well, we'll but, I mean, what does that later. say if Charles Manson is interested in your religion for his purposes? That's kind of disturbing. And rejected it, according yeah. to Well, so. and exactly. The actual quote with Manson is that he rejected Scientology because it was too crazy for him. You got Charles Manson saying something's too crazy. <laughs> well, <laughs> then, that's uh, all you need. We got, we, got, we got two minutes left. I have one quick question. What would you say to a young person about to go into Sea York? One sentence. What would you tell them? I don't do it. Get out. Run away now. <laughs> and I'd say, listen, get a grip. Go out and chase some skirts. And join <laughs> exactly. Nobody's joining anymore, anyway, right? Uh, I mean, no, uh, no. Well, no. So, so what I want to do is I want to. I want you guys and I talked right before we went on, and we talked about the revelation of support. Um, you know, Mark, you said you saw people when they got out, like the Dennis Ehrlichs, their lives were destroyed. Sure, there was only one place. And all, uh, a news group, all religion, Scientology. A little news group on the internet was the only place that they could find like-minded people that cared about them and would help them re-enter into society. Um, yeah, there were people in the background. Robert Vaughn Young, Hubbard's ex-PR guy, was helping people up in the Seattle area. There were a lot. There were, but you know what? They weren't organized, and the internet was the big game changer. And now, if you want support, it's there. It's right here. Right. Exactly. And Chris, um, you know, Mike Render, Marty Rathbun, Tom Devach, all according to Scientology, evil, horrible people. Mm -hmm. But according to you and yourself, you all are thriving. Could you talk about how it's safe to become a volunteer SP in the world today? <laughs> it, is, it is actually, it is a wonderful world out here. And in the, in the Scientology bubble world, they tell you that, you know, you're going to fail, it's miserable, everybody out there is a hater, and it's nothing but bad news and horrible things, and it's just not true. The world is filled with wonderful, amazing, and very understanding people who have helped me right. a tremendous amount to and get to that, where I'm at And with that, i got to thank you both. You've been wonderful guests. We look forward to having you on again in the future if we're able to do it. Please do. I uh, want to remind everyone to watch uh, Road to Reason every week. And uh, watch Going Clear tonight at 8 p.m. HBO. 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 Yeah. You do yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Check us out on Facebook. We do. We do. We do. We do. We Hail Zenu. Hail Zenu. We're all there. Good to meet you, Chris. Yes, thank you. You too, Mark. Thank you, right, you guys. Pleasure.